All right, so here is something I believe every Google Analytics 4 user needs to do today. I believe BigQuery is going to replace a big part of Google Analytics 4 in the near future for most organizations. And that's why I believe you need to make a link between Google Analytics 4 and BigQuery. Even if you don't use BigQuery today, I still believe you need to make this connection because the moment you do this, you'll start collecting historical data and you'll be much better prepared for what is coming up in the near future. All right, I'll explain myself more, but this is what is coming up in this video. Let's dive in. Hey and welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you use your web analytics to make better decisions in your daily work. I wanna say thank you for everyone that has been liking my videos and has subscribed to the channel. That really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. As a way to say thank you, I've created a short cheat sheet on how you can grow your website traffic. So if you're interested in that, you can just go into the video description, you'll find a link there to that cheat sheet for free. Also, if you like this video and want to watch more, just head over to my channel profile. You'll find all sorts of video tutorials on Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, setting up tracking, etc. All right, with that out of the way, let's move over to the content of this video. Let me first give you some context for this video because let me be honest here with you. I am late to the BigQuery party. Colleagues have been telling me for years now okay, you should check out BigQuery. I've been reading tutorials, but I always felt very hesitant to dive in. But over the past year, I really have changed my mind. I started using BigQuery and I believe that this is the way forward for many organizations. So let me tell you about the context and why I changed my mind. Over the past years, of course, I've been very intensely using Google Analytics. It's the core product for data collection on most of my clients. And while I like the product in general, I find it easy to use. I like it, it's flexible enough. It's, it suits smaller organizations and larger organizations. But however, I've come across several very strange bugs over the past year that I could not explain. So the setup was correct. I checked everything and still the reports were not adding up. And then I dove into several forums and I met many of you who also encounter strange bugs in Google Analytics 4. And I found that Google is not really transparent when bugs occur and what they are doing to solve it. To me, it seems that they are very indifferent about bugs in Google Analytics 4 and not transparent and not communicating clearly about what is happening. Also, Google is pushing a lot of updates in Google Analytics. And um, there is a change log page. I will link it in the video description. But on that change log, they will often tell you something about, okay, on this date, we made improvements to the attribution of different channels. For instance, Google Ads. But they never quite tell you, okay, what exactly did you change? So something changed on a specific date that has consequences for your reports. So what I would like to have here is more detail about what has changed so I can take that into consideration when I'm analyzing the reports. But basically Google Analytics is a black box. You never know what Google has done to the reports. And lastly, Google over the past year has introduced more and more sampling in their reports. And sampling basically means that to speed up processing, they don't use your entire data set, but they use a part of it and then they estimate the reports and they can do that quite well. So for broad stroke analysis and just general picture, getting a general idea of what's happening on the site, sampling is not that bad, but when you try to detect small changes, so let's say you're innovating on a landing page, you're changing things or you're changing things in the form and you try to detect small changes, then sampling really is an issue because your reports become less accurate. So a small change in percentage might be undetectable when your reports are sampled or you might come to the wrong conclusions. And especially if you're using Looker dashboards, so GA4 interface has a clear alert at the top of the report, okay, be careful because sampling is applied to this report, but Looker dashboards don't have this yet. So if you're looking at a Looker dashboard that has Google Analytics data in it, that data might be sampled, but there's no way to tell you because there's no sampling alert in Looker Studio yet. So over the past year, I've come to the conclusion that we are a bit too dependent on Google Analytics. And this makes us very vulnerable because Google can just make a change tomorrow in, a, in the product. And then we just need to comply because we don't have a choice because we are 100% dependent on Google Analytics for our decision-making. So that's why 
I'm currently recommending all my clients and I'm recommending it to you right here to become less dependent on Google Analytics. And uh, there are basically two options for the smaller organizations. The easiest option here is to just install PBIC Pro alongside of Google Analytics. PBIC Pro is free in many cases, so you can just install it on your site. The setup is very easy and you have just a fallback solution in case something happens to Google Analytics. But I found among my own clients as well that many organizations just want to stay in the Google ecosystem. Well, if you want to stay in the Google ecosystem and you want the maximum amount of flexibility and you want to be able to grow in the future, I believe linking your Google Analytics 4 property to BigQuery is the best way to become less dependent on Google Analytics 4. So we're still using Google Analytics for our data collection, but for our reporting and analysis, we can start to leverage BigQuery in the future. All right, BigQuery, let's talk about BigQuery. What is BigQuery? Well, it is a data warehouse solution, which means it's basically a tool that can store large databases, like very, very much data in one database. But unlike other tools who are very expensive, BigQuery is actually very affordable. Chances are that if you just follow the instructions in this video, you'll never get a bill for what you use because BigQuery has very generous free limits. You can store 10 gigabytes per month into BigQuery or you can process one terabyte of data. So the chances that you will be charged for just storing your raw data are very low. You need to have a lot of traffic for that to happen. You do need to set up payment details. So Google wants you to apply a credit card just in case you cross those limits that they can charge you for those costs. But you can set up notifications and thresholds to kind of manage and keep the costs of BigQuery under control. So the moment you link GA4 with BigQuery, you start to collect raw data. So that means that the data that GA4 uses to kind of collect the user count and the, the channels, the raw data that's underneath those reports, if you link GA4 with BigQuery, you start to store the same data in BigQuery. And the moment you link it, is the moment you start collecting historical data. So that's why it's so important that even if you don't use it today, you make this connection today to be able to use your historical data in the future. But why would you do this? Well, first of all, if you have data in BigQuery, you have the option to calculate your own report. So if the reports in GA4 for some reason are not accurate enough or they have bugs, you have the option to use your raw data and generate your own reports. For instance, a traffic acquisition report with all your traffic channels. You can apply your own attribution models or you can make your own landing page report without the not set row that everyone hates so much. But I found that BigQuery is also very handy when you have problems in your reports, but you don't know what those problems are. Well then in BigQuery, just by going into the raw data, it's often much easier to spot problems that you have in your reporting and in your data collection. All right, so let's go over the steps needed to link your GA4 property with BigQuery. And the first step is to go to cloud.google.com where you find this screen. And I'm already logged in with my own Gmail address right here. This is an important step. You want a Google account. This might be a Gmail account or just your business address that you can convert to a Google account, but you need a Google account that is stable. So you don't want just a random email address from an employee who could be gone in two months because that gets you in trouble. This is where you manage your payment details, your billing, etc. So you want an account that belongs to the organization where the data belongs to, and that is also just stable. So sometimes you have, for instance, marketing at, and then your organization.com, or you have a Gmail account that is like a stable account that governs all software, but it doesn't really matter. Sometimes I open up a new Gmail account. That's the easiest way to just transfer the whole thing to a client if they are not so clear about their whole, um, account structure, but don't open it up on your own account or don't open it up on a random account from a user who could be gone in two months, but open it up on a stable Google account. Go to cloud.google.com and press this button, get started for free. This will take you to a form. You can just go through all the steps, agree and continue, fill out the form and fill out the credit card details here. And it is important that you fill out the credit card details before we do the other steps, because if you don't do this, you can still link your GA4 property with BigQuery, but BigQuery will remove those tables, I believe in 60 days. So it's very important that you first enable 
your payment details, then open up a project and then link your GA4 property. Okay, so I'm assuming that you have set up your payment details. I haven't done this because this is just a testing space for me, but I assume that you have already entered your payment details. And again, this is important to do before you proceed with the next steps, because otherwise BigQuery will remove your tables in 60 days. So first, if you have set up your payment details, go into this button right here, where you can make a new project. And here, what I like to do is just name the project, for instance, uh, Leon Korteweg, so the name of the organizations and then analytics. So that makes it clear that that is a project dedicated to everything that has to do with web analytics, data, etc. And you can then create that project. All right, so the next step is to link our GA4 property with BigQuery. And I have an old side of mine that doesn't have this connection yet. So I'm going to use this as an example. But you just open up your own GA4 property, the, the property that you want to link. And then you go into admin. You scroll down and you'll find here the BigQuery links section. If you open that up, you can press the link button and here choose a BigQuery project. And in this list, you'll find the project that we've just enabled. This can take a couple of minutes. So for me, it took maybe a minute or two before this showed up. So just keep refreshing because this is the project that I want to stream my data to. I can just confirm it here. I want the data location to be the EU. I'm going to press next. I'm going to just enable both the daily and the streaming. So the streaming is disabled for me because I haven't set up my payment details. So just enable that as well on your end, because you should have done that if you followed my instructions. And then I check every box here because you never know what data you need in the future. So I want to include everything in case you have more than a million events per day, you can configure if you want to exclude some events. So for instance, you have a couple of events that are generating a lot of data, your scroll events or things like that. You can disable them here to keep the whole thing under the 1 million events per day. Okay, then we can press next and we can submit the link. And the moment you do this is the moment you start collecting data. So probably if I go back into my Google Cloud project and I select the project that I just created, I can go into the hamburger menu right here and then go to BigQuery. And this is the place where my data will show up. Well, right now nothing happens. I need to come back tomorrow and then we will see more data right here. Let me switch to a different project so I can show you the results of what this does to your data. All right, I have opened up my own BigQuery account here. So it's my own website, which contains all my own data. I've set this up years ago. Let me show you what you can expect the upcoming day. So if you navigate to BigQuery right here, you can open up your project and you will find a tab that says analytics dash and then a number. And that's how you can recognize your raw J4 data set. There could be other databases also. So for instance, I have a universal analytics backup right here, but this is the data set that you have from your own site. This contains the raw J4 data. And if you open this up, you will find at least two tables. So events dash, which contains your historical data and events dash intraday dash, which contains your real time data from today. So the current day, you can build a real-time dashboard on this table right here that shows what's happening right now on your site. But then the historical data is all stored right here. So events dash, and then you have a table for every day. So one, first of January, second, third, and um, but also last year. It's like every day has its own table right here. And if I hit preview, I can also show you how the table looks. So every row is a separate event that somebody did on your site. So somebody visited my site, I believe my homepage right here. So the location is the homepage. And uh, this is the cookie ID of that user. But we also have the device category. We have like what kind of Android model was this? We have a city right here. Netherlands, Europe, continent. So there's a lot of information and every row is a single event. And we can use this data again to just build our own reports to make a very simple example right here. I can just hit query and I can go select and then count distinct and then user 
pseudo ID, which is the cookie ID. So I can just count all the separate cookie IDs that I had yesterday, which is two. So yesterday I had two users on my site. I can even name this as users. So users is two. Okay, so of course I don't have a lot of traffic on my site, especially in the holiday season. But um, this is how you can make like a very simple analysis. As you can see, this process is a bit technical, but I wanna tell you, don't be intimidated by this, because even though the manual process of analyzing this data is very technical process, I expect in the near future that we will have automated solutions for this. So one example of this is ga4dataform.com. This is a solution that you can install in your BigQuery, in your data form environment. And this will generate reports and tables for you. And this is like in a very early stage. So uh, there's not much documentation yet. There are not many tutorials on this. I might do tutorials on this in the future, but um, this is just one example of a product that takes your raw GA4 data set and turns it into tables uh, that you can analyze yourself, like the ones that you would find in your GA4 reports. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you have a question, please leave them down in the comments below. I always love hearing from all of you. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel because that really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. And again, if you like this video and want to watch more, just head over to my profile. You'll find all sorts of videos there on setting up Google Analytics, setting up Google Tag Manager. So um, find something else you want to watch there. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.